Hey, I'm Newton Faulkner, and you're watching Toasted. Hey, back to Yelm. Uh, yellow <laughs> Vinyl, Yellow Vinyl, I saw. Is it still yeah. available, actually? Yeah, Yellow Vinyl just oh yeah, came out last week. Beautiful yeah. as well, and it's good quality. It's got some weight to it. So where can people get it? Uh, I think on the website you could order it. I'm not quite sure how many we've pressed, actually, yet. But I think, yeah, I think there's some tracks. I can't wait to... I think Human Love, the track, I haven't heard on vinyl yet, but I think it will really lend itself to it. I think it's got this kind of... I mean, we've based the groove on a... Actually, <laughs> we based the groove on a giant, drunken, robotic horse. That's what we were going for. This kind of... <laughs> and it's all late. It's all really weird. I was wondering, actually, where did where did you get that beat? What, what is it? I mean, it, it, it it's almost like an old record that... An old, uh, I'm going to say this, a Jamaican uh, reggae beat that you found somewhere, dusted in a, an old record store, sampled it, and used it in the background. We, we built it with uh, this guy called Sam Farrow, who I did the whole third album with, who's an amazing, like, all round musician and producer and writer. It's incredible. But we sat, yeah, kind of took the, the groove to him, mm -hmm. and basically we're like, this could be like a nice acoustic pop song, which worries me. <laughs> <laughs> So I was like, what can we do to like just just do something that just the polar opposite? What's the weirdest thing we could do to it? And we're kind of, what if it was really like, because I, when we, again, we made the demo and the vocals on that are again, demo vocals. And the reason, the vo like it's a completely different style of singing for me. And the reason it's got this kind of quiet shouting, the, ah, but with loads of intensity. Mm -hmm. So it's like, ah. <laughs> is because um, I was in an Airbnb and there were neighbors and it was really thin walled and it was really late. So I couldn't sing very loud. So I was there with the mic and I you recorded this song in an Airbnb yeah. room in I was in Los Angeles. No shit. So I was sitting there and I was like, we can't sing it properly, but we need to record the melody and we put the guitar in and actually the snare sound on the record, a huge part of it is just a massively distorted guitar channel. So it's an acoustic guitar going dum And then the reverb on it is the reverb of the Airbnb in this random room. And then the, the vocal is so, like, it's the quietest vocal I've ever done. Now if you feel like taking on the weather, me and you taking on the world together. And I kind of assumed that when we did the track properly, it, it would be like, take it out. <laughs> and I said that to the guy that was producing it. And he was like, no, this is this is cool. This is really weird and interesting, this quiet shouting. And we ended up using it on quite a few tracks. Quiet well, shouting, that's well put. Well, that's what, um, actually, that's how the Bee Gees, that's how the Bee Gees guy got his sound. It was like, can you scream? Really? Can you scream really quietly and really high? And he was like, I don't know. <laughs> and then ended up doing that. <laughs> You just ruined the Bee Gees for me. Oh, now I can't listen to their music without thinking this Barry Gibb going like. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> anyway, I, I love the Bee Gees, by the way. Hey, uh, of course, of course, the time uh, we we don't have a lot of time. Uh, one thing that uh, that I found uh, delving through all your social media is uh, you exclaim, uh, "Oh, glob!" Somewhere that means that you're an Adventure Time fan, probably, right? Oh yeah, definitely. You can't not be. There's a just musically, all the sounds. I don't know. I need to do some research into who does the music, but. Yeah, just the sounds, even like the little robot noises are so like just authentic, proper 8-bit, awesome analog noise. Yeah, it's amazing. Could you cover that tune song, actually, the theme song? We did say, we were thinking about ending the set with it, just with the credit one. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> hey, uh, another thing that I loved is uh, you put a special uh, uh, playlist on Spotify with uh, songs that inspired you for the album. Uh, yeah. Um, a couple of things that I loved was Hangai. I never heard of it. Uh, Mongolian it's like shit. It's so good. It's so like outstanding. I think it's incredible, yeah. and it's like kind of, it's really Tarantino in its own weird. Where did you find it? I was just trolling around. I, I just like a good, I like a good strange dig, and I, I really, I still, I, I struggle with, with Spotify for some reasons because no one makes any money, and that is terrible, but. At the same time, I, A, I want as many people as possible to hear my music. That's why I'm making it. Yeah. So that's good. It's a good way of doing that. And the influenced by thing, I can do for days. It's fantastic. It's a, it's a really great way to discover new music. Yeah, it's an amazing kind of opportunity. Just to say, I mean, you could do it manually, I guess. you could, But you'd have to go out and find the records. 
or do it on YouTube. Uh, YouTube. Well, people used to make tapes, I guess, right? But then I mean, yeah. shit. It's, yeah, it's a really interesting thing to be able to be like, okay, so who's he listening? He's listening to that guy. For the fans, it's fantastic. I mean, yeah. for us, it's like great to listen to what you're listening to. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I did that until I ended up listening to Chinese folk music. <laughs> hey, another uh, uh, a song that I uh, didn't expect there was I Can't Feel My Face by Weekend. I love that one. Oh, that was just production-wise. It was just one of the best-sounding records that came out in that time. And I think you have to kind of... What you have to pay attention to what's... But it's also so, I mean, if you look at all the others, it's just like weird rhythms or weird, of course, interesting rhythms. Yeah. And then suddenly you have the Major Laser song, which is also a great song. Yeah, and the Major Laser thing is obvious because I was from Coverdale on the record, yeah. so that's a big one. But again, like production-wise, I, I love production. I get into it. I mean, I'm not... I love playing guitar, and I'm I'm just not a purist. I'm, I don't think I'm... I'm going to do the occasional album, like, like Studio Zoo, which was completely stripped back and completely raw. Yeah. And I think I'm going to do that every now and then, but I am going to balance it out with me having a huge amount of fun <laughs> in the <laughs> studio. <laughs> I'm trying to think, like, oh, was the books on there as well? Yeah. Did the books make it? Oh, I love the books. I was actually listening to them in the bus this morning. And uh, another one I liked is uh, The Lumineers. I love that one. Great, yeah, great awesome. live song. Yeah, it's just a great song. Definitely. Awesome. Hey, uh, you're playing here tonight. Of course, yeah. you're, you're on a small tour right now, right, I guess? Will yeah. you be back in summer and tour Europe and do festivals and stuff? I'd love to. Yeah, European festivals are on my massively on my to-do list. But I just need to just need to keep building, because I think we made some we did actually make some mistakes quite early on. I think label wise, we yeah we did some stuff in Europe. We kind of really started moving things, and then we just stopped and left it for ages, for which I apologise. Um, but now we're kind of starting to build up again. So do you actually look at the the old videos that are online of yourself? Like there's some stuff from I don't know 2004 where you're busking in London, and do you, do you actually do you still see your, watch that stuff yourself? Not yeah, dude, it's fun. I'll, I'll have another look. I always want. I always come back to Bohemian Rhapsody. It's here in the park. If I feel down, I might watch that just to be like, I can, I can do this. I can. Everything is okay. It's gonna be all right. Because <laughs> yeah, that video is just so much fun. Just uh, it's when it pans out to the crowd, just everyone smiling, which is, which is beautiful. Actually, I must admit, this tour, this tour so far, I think is the best tour I've ever done. I think I've done the I've done the solo thing. I've done the solo thing with massive production. I've done the solo thing with occasional guests. But then this tour is it's a really good mixture of all kinds of things. It covers a huge amount of ground. I think because the album covers so much ground, we've kind of we were forced to kind of think outside the box. We've got the most amazing drummer, and my brother, who I write with all the time, is is doing loads of harmonies and they are the harmonies that are on the record so there's that kind of thing holding it together which I have struggled with in the past because when Handbuilt came out I was touring on my own yeah. and it's actually got quite a lot of production on it it's quite subtle production but it's definitely mm -hmm. there and then the second album which was quite experimental when I go back to it stuff like Resin on My Heartstrings mm -hmm. has some crazy sounds on it mm -hmm. like the bass line is a robot throwing up it's like wow and then yes yeah, really strange really strange sounds on that one and that was that was when i started kind of multitasking which is really fun but i think i took it i think i took it too far i took it to a point where it was actually it was the bass player from reef came up to me after no a gig way. I, d I, I, d I love Reef. They yeah. was like the, they, I mean, it was actually me, me and my drummer were talking about Reef being like, how how good were Reef? Come Those guys on. were so fucking funny as well. Ridiculous. Yeah. They're but wicked. You, you, you met them. In the yeah, no, yeah. but he'd, we'd been, we'd played like loads of festivals with them over the course of kind of a couple of years. And he watched from the back of the stage and he came up to me afterwards. He was like, I actually had no idea what it was you were doing. Like, that's hard. Why are you doing that? Because <laughs> I was playing like proper bass lines and kick drum patterns with my feet while playing guitar, and I was kind of glued to the spot, which I think doesn't didn't really help with the like the performance aspect mm -hmm. so much. And then, basically, I'd taken it so far that if you're standing in the crowd, like no one actually knew what I was doing. And I think a lot of people assumed, especially after kind of loads of big loopers came out, that I was another looper. Which I've never, like, with the solo stuff, like, teardrop would be really easy. If I just went dun dun to get loop, that'd be so much easier than trying to intertwine it into the guitar part. It is like a, it's a very different, 
kind of playing style. Yeah, but I don't think you took it too far. I think it's part of the appeal. I mean, it's well, like yeah, a, for me as a, as, a, as a listener, mm -hmm. and it's also great to watch you play. Yeah, but I think with th with this setup, it's less it's less multitasking, mm -hmm. but it's more focused on guitar. And then instead of doing the uber complicated kind of foot stuff, I've actually got a drummer, so the groove's so much better. And uh, having some other instruments and like harmonizing and being able to jam like at all is completely new to me. Awesome. I'd been so like locked in in place and being able to just let someone do something for a bit, it's like, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, um, uh, uh, a couple of uh, small questions that, mm. that I found online. The shoes that you're wearing in the Get Free video, what are they? Because they look like uh, jungle boots, but uh, they're classy. I don't know if I got to keep those. I can't remember. <laughs> well, the styling is great. <laughs> oh, thanks. No, they're good shoes. Yeah, definitely. Well, I that can that's the other thing that scared me is when it was like, okay, so you want to cut your hair. Okay, cool. Could you do it with your top off? I was like, yeah, no, oh, not, not right now. I feel a bit freaked out by that. And they were like, can you do it in a vest? I was like, probably. And then we did some shots in a vest. And they were like, can we shave you a little bit? Oh, you Jesus. <laughs> Are you shitting me? <laughs> yeah, I, I had really hairy shoulders. Well, so, um, yeah, it looked, it was just really caught the light. It was quite shocking. I think it's, uh, I think the tank top works really well, actually. I mean, what yeah, you no, no, Yeah, just the, just the vest thing was cool. I think, yeah. I, yeah, I don't think I needed to be topless but that definitely caught me off guard i wasn't because that was kind of the day before could you do you mind like that, uh, that oh, i think it would be a little bit too intense for the whole situation yeah i think it was a step too far but uh, great video again oh. hey thanks so much for uh, for your time and uh, uh looking forward to see you play cool pleasure take care man